Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Today is Friday, November, I'm looking for my date, November 29th, and um, we are still talking about Ahola and Aholaba. We just talked about the fact that Aholaba, which represents Judah, <clears throat> was more unfaithful to God. They turned their back on um, God and they followed those Assyrians. And that brings us to verse tw chapter 23, verse 22. Therefore, O Holaba, which is Judah, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will stir up against you your lovers from whom you turned in disgust. And I will bring them against you from every side, the Balbon Balbonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekad and Shoa and Koa, and all the Assyrians with them. Desirable young men, governors and commanders, all of them, officers and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. So basically he's saying all these surrounding nations are going to come against you because I've had enough of the idolatry. Verse 24. And they shall come against you from the north and with chariots and wagons and a host of peoples. They shall set themselves against you on every side with buckler, shield and helmet. And I will commit judgment to them, and they shall judge you according to their judgments. And I will direct my jealousy against you, that they may deal with you in fury. They shall cut off your nose and your ears, and your survivors shall fall by the sword. They shall seize your son and daughters, and your survivors shall be devoured by, by fire. This is a very big big overtaking of this nation of Judah. They are getting stomped on. Verse 26, they shall also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. Thus I will put an end to your lewdness and your whoring begun in the land of Egypt so that you shall not lift up your eyes to them or remember Egypt anymore. So what's happening here is God is allowing these nations to come in and forcibly take over, loot them um, of all their riches, basically strip them down to nothing. Verse 28, for thus says the Lord God, behold, I will deliver you into the hands of those whom you hate, into the hands, hands of those whom you turned in disgust, and they shall deal with you in hatred and take away all the fruit of your labor and leave you naked and bare and the nakedness of your whoring shall be uncovered. Your lewdness and your whoring have brought this upon you because you have played the whore with the nations and defiled yourself with their idols. You have gone the way of your sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into your hand. Thus says the Lord God, you shall drink your sister's cup that is large, deep and large, you shall be laughed at and held in derision, for it contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, a cup of horror and desolation. The cup of your sister, Samaria, you shall drink it and drain it out, and gnaw its shards and tear your breasts. For I have spoken, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, you yourself must bear the consequences of your lewdness and your whoring. So when I looked at the um, fire study Bible, there was a note that said that cast me behind your back. What does that mean? To turn back the to the world's ungodly values, behaviors, and lifestyles after having experienced spiritual salvation is the same as despising God and throwing him aside as though he were useless. Followers of Jesus must never abandon the Lord. Instead, they must show love and gratitude to Christ for dying for their sins and restoring the opportunity to have a personal relationship with God. We have got to remember the value of our salvation. We've got to remember the fact that the value of the fact that we have the Bible, that we have so much available to us to understand godly principles and what God wants for our lives. We've got to cherish that and keep it our first love. Today is Friday, so I'm going to remind you, no video over the weekend. I'll be back with you on Monday. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.